One Martian Afternoon by Tom Leahy. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Frank Malanga. One Martian Afternoon by Tom Leahy. The clod burst in a cloud of red sand, and the little Martian sand dog ducked quickly into his burrow. Mary Lou threw another at the aperture in the ground, and then ran over, and with the inside of her foot she scraped sand into it until it was filled to the surface. She started to leave, but stopped. The little fellow might choke to death, she thought. It wasn't his fault she had to live on Mars. Satisfied that the future of something was dependent on her whim, she dug the sand from the hole. His little yellow eyes peered out at her. "'Go on and live,' she said magnanimously. She got up and brushed the sand from her knees and dress and walked slowly down the red road. The noon sun was relentless. Nowhere was there relief from it. Mary Lou squinted and shaded her eyes with her hand. She looked in the sky for one of those infrequent Martian rain clouds but the deep blue was only occasionally spotted by fragile white puffs. Like the sun, they had no regard for her either. They were too concerned with moving toward the distant mountains, there to cling momentarily to the peaks and then continue on their endless route. Mary Lou dabbed the moisture from her forehead with the hem of her dress. I know one thing, she mumbled. When I grow up, I'll get to Earth and never come back to Mars, no matter what. She broke into a defiant, cadent step. "'And I won't care whether you and Mommy like it or not,' she declared aloud, sticking out her chin at an imaginary father before her. Before she realized it, a tiny, lime-washed stone house appeared not a hundred yards ahead of her. That was the odd thing about the Martian midday. Something small and miles away would suddenly become large and very near as you approached it. The heat waves did it, her father had told her. Really, she had replied, and you think you know so doggone much, she had thought. And Twiley, she broke into a run. By the Joshua trees, through the stone gateway she ran, and with a leap she lit like a young frog on the porch. Hi, Aunt Twiley, she said breathlessly. An ancient Martian woman sat in a rocking chair in the shade of the porch. She held a bowl of purple river apples in her lap. Her papyrus-like hands moved quickly as she shaved the skin from one. In a matter of seconds it was peeled. She looked up over her bifocals at the panting Mary Lou. "'Gracious, child, you shouldn't run like that this time of day,' she said. "'You Earth children aren't used to our Martian heat. It'll make you sick if you run too much.' "'I don't care. I hate Mars. Sometimes I wish I could just get good and sick so I'd get to go home.' Mary Lou, you are a little tyrant, Aunt Twiley laughed. What you doing, Aunt Twiley? Mary Lou asked, getting up from her frog posture and coming near the old Martian lady's chair. Oh, peeling apples, dear. I'm going to make a cobbler this afternoon. She dropped the last apple peeled into the bowl. There, done. Would you like a little cool apple juice, Mary Lou? Sure, you betcha. Hey, could I watch you make the cobbler, Aunt Twiley? Could I? Mommy can't make it for anything. It tastes like Lou. Maybe if I could see how you do it, maybe I could show her, do you think? Now, Mary Lou, your mother must be a wonderful cook to have raised such a healthy little girl. I'm sure there's nothing she could learn from me, Aunt Twiley said as she arose. Let's go inside and have that apple juice. The kitchen was dark and cool, and filled with the odors of the wonderful edibles the old Martian had created on and in the earth-made stove. She opened the earth-made refrigerator that stood in the corner, and withdrew an earth-made bottle filled with Martian apple juice. Mary Lou jumped up on the table and sat cross-legged. "'Here, dear,' and Twiley handed her a glass of the icy liquid. "'Hm, thanks,' Mary Lou said, and gulped down half the contents. That tastes dreamy, Aunt Twiley. The little girl watched the old Martian as she lit the oven and gathered the necessary ingredients for the cobbler. As she bent over to get a bowl from the shelf beneath Mary Lou's perch, 
her hair brushed against the child's knee. Her hair was soft, soft and white as a puppy's, soft and white like the down from a dandelion. She smiled at Mary Lou. She always smiled. Her pencil-thin mouth was a perpetual arc. Mary Lou drained the glass. Aunt Twiley, is it true what my daddy says about the Martians? True? How can I say, dear? I don't know what he said. Well, I mean, that when us Earth people came, you Martians did uh, inf... Uh, infan... Infanside? Aunt Twiley interrupted, rolling the dough on the board a little flatter, a little faster. Yes, that's it. Killed babies, Mary Lou said, and took an apple from the bowl. My daddy says you were real primitive and killed your babies for some silly religious reason. I think that's awful. How could it be religious? God couldn't like to have little babies killed. She took a big bite of the apple. The juice ran from the corners of her mouth. Your daddy is a very intelligent man, Mary Lou, but he's partially wrong. It is true, but not for religious reasons. It was a necessity. You must remember, dear, Mars is very arid sterile, unable to sustain many living things. It was awful, but it was the only way we knew to control the population. Mary Lou looked down her button nose as she picked the brown spot from the apple. Hm, I'll tell him he's wrong, she said. He thinks he knows so damn much. Mary Lou, Aunt Twiley exclaimed as she looked over her glasses. A sweet child like you shouldn't use such language. Mary Lou giggled and popped the remaining portion of the apple in her mouth. "'Do your parents know where you are, child?' Aunt Twiley asked as she took the bowl from Mary Lou's hands. She began dicing the apples into a dough-lined casserole. "'No, they don't,' Mary Lou replied. She sprayed the air with little particles of apple as she talked. "'Everybody's gone to the hills to look for the boys.' "'The boys?' Aunt Twiley stopped her work and looked at the little girl. Yes, Jimmy and Eddie and some of the others disappeared from the settlement this morning. The men are afraid they've run off to the hills, and the renegades got them. Gracious, Aunt Twiley said, her brow knitted into a crisscross of wrinkles. Oh, I know those dopes. They're probably down at the canals, fishing or something. Just the same, your mother will be frantic, dear. You should have told her where you were going. I don't care, Mary Lou said with unadulterated honesty. She'll be all right when I get home. And Twiley shook her head and clucked her tongue. Can I have another glass, please? The old lady poured the glass full again. And then she sprinkled sugar down among the apple cubes in the casserole and covered them with a blanket of dough. She cut an uneven circle of half-moons in it and put it in the oven. They're all ready to bake, Mary Lou, she sighed. It looks real yummy, Aunt Twiley. Well, I certainly hope it turns out good, dear she said, wiping her forehead with her apron. She looked out the open back door. The landscape was beginning to gray as heavier clouds moved down from the mountains and pressed the afternoon heat closer, more oppressively to the ground. My, it's getting hot. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if we don't get a little rain this afternoon, Mary Lou. She turned back to the little girl. Tell me some more about your daddy, dear. We Martians certainly owe a lot to men like your father. That's what he says, too. He says you Martians would have died out in a few years if we hadn't come here. We're so much more civ civil civilized. Yeah, he says we were so much more civilized than you that we saved your lives when we came here with all our modern stuff. Well, that's true enough, dear. Just look at that wonderful earth stove, Aunt Twiley said and laughed. We wouldn't be able to bake an apple cobbler like that without it, would we? A rumble of thunder shouldered through the crowded hot air. No, he says, you Martians are kind of likable, but you can't be trusted. He's nuts. I like you Martians. Thank you, child, but everyone's entitled to his own opinion. Don't judge your daddy too severely. And Twiley said as she scraped spilled sugar from the table and put little bits of it on her tongue. He says that you'd bite the hand that feeds you. He says we brought all these keen things to Mars, and that if you got the chance, you'd kill all of us. Gracious, said Aunt Twiley, as she speared scraps of dough with the point of her long paring knife. He's a dope, Mary Lou said. 
and Twiley opened the oven and peeked in at the cobbler. The aroma of the simmering apples rushed out and filled the room. "'Could I have some cobbler when it's done?' Mary Lou asked, her mouth filling with saliva. "'I'm afraid not, child. It's getting rather late.' The thunder rumbled again, a little closer, a little louder. The old lady washed the blade of the knife in the sink. "'Tell me more of what your father says, dear,' she said as she adjusted the bifocals on her thin nose and ran her thumb along the length of the knife's blade. "'Oh, nothing much more. He just says that you'd kill us if you had the chance. That's the way the inferior races always act,' he says. "'They want to kill the people that help them, cause they resent them. "'Very interesting. "'Well, it isn't so, is it, Aunt Twiley?' The room was filled with blinding blue-white light, and the walls quaked at the sound of a monstrous thunderclap. The old Martian glanced nervously at the clock on the wall. "'My, it is getting late,' she said as she fondled the knife in her hands. "'You Martians wouldn't do anything like that, would you?' "'You want the truth, don't you, dear?' Aunt Twiley asked, smiling, as she walked to the table where Mary Lou sat. "'Of course I do, Aunt Twiley,' she said. Her scream was answered and smothered by the horrendous roar of the thunder and the piercing hiss of the rain that fell in sheets. In great volumes of water it fell, as though the heavens were attempting to wash the sins of man from the universe and into non-existence in the void beyond the void. Mary Lou lay beside the other children. Aunt Twiley smiled at them, closed the bedroom door, and returned to the kitchen. The storm had moved on. The thunder was the faint grumbling of a pacified old man. What water fell was a monotonous trickle from the eaves of the lime-washed stone house. And Twiley washed the blood from the knife and wiped it dry on her apron. She opened the oven and took out the browned cobbler. Sweet apple juice bubbled to the surface through the half-moons and burst into lights of sugary aroma. The sun broke through the thinning edge of the thunderhead. Aunt Twiley brushed a lock of her feathery white hair from her moist cheek. Gracious, she said, I must tidy up a bit before the others come. End of One Martian Afternoon by Tom Leahy Recording by Frank Malanga, Pembroke Pines, Florida